Hello, hello, hello. We're back for our Friday night live crafting combo. All right. Hello. Hello, my friend. Is it better? No, it's still there. Oh, and I restarted my phone, so. Okay. Well. Hopefully it's, it is. Hopefully it's not too unbearable for you. Um, I went ahead and pressed live because okay. I'm about five minutes late, so sorry for the delay. I'm still doing some printing because my printer was giving me a little bit of some problems earlier. And my paper kept jamming, so now it seems to be working. I didn't mean to print two of these, but it's done. So I guess it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you for joining us. If you're here, leave a comment below. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and also follow Tara on her YouTube channel, which is Precious Delight Canada. Um, we try and do this every Friday night. We've taken a hiatus over the last couple of weeks because both of us have been pretty busy. Tara's been a fair queen over here having her fairs every weekend. Go girl. <laughs> and I was being fast last, uh, well, the week before last when I went to a rap concert. And it took me a few to recover. So <laughs> it is what it is. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. My bounce back is not the same. Not at all. Not at all. So Tonight we're going to be working on button pins. So my girl just got her button maker. I've had mine for over a year now, but I could probably still count on one hand how many times I pulled mine out. So when she asked what we were doing this week, I was like, that's a no brainer. We're going to be doing button pins and that'll get me using my stuff again. So I'm thinking of tonight if I'm just going to keep it at this angle and not try and fuss with the overhead. I don't know. Are you going to be switching yours around? I'm going to switch mine around. Okay. So I'm going to do that right now. So the prints that you did for your button pins, Tara, did you cut them by hand or did you have your Cricut cut them out for you? No, it came with this little funny circular um, paper cutter, a little handheld -hand paper cutter, which okay. I'm not too crazy. Oh, it came I'm with one too, but it's kind of cheaply made. So, well, I wasn't too crazy about mine because I've never used a rotary cutter before. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for my punches, but I can't. I don't even know exactly what size this thing is. Give me a second to get this on the mount. So I'm not even too sure what size the um what is it the press is. I'm not sure if it's like two inches or like one point seven five. I couldn't remember what I bought. Okay, so the button maker that I purchased, I did put in the description box. So if you are just joining the live tonight, we're going to be doing button pins. Um, Tara just got her button maker, and so we're going to use it and then get me into using mine again because it's just been sitting under my desk. So if you're interested in making buttons after you watch this live or watch the playback, then you can click on the link and get yours from Amazon. It won't cost you anything, but it will give a little bit of kickback to the channel. Um, make sure you're liking, you. subscribing, leaving a comment and all that good jazz. Um mm -hmm. So the button maker that I got, it um, has three different sizes that it can make. So um, so the smallest size is one inch. Then I have a one and a quarter inch and a two and a quarter inch. Okay, so you got the multi one. Right. No. Okay, now once you turn your camera around, are you able to see what I'm doing? I can see it on my laptop. Oh, okay. So do your rotary cutters look similar to this? 
little contraption. I literally just had it. Yeah. Okay, cool. I just don't know why I put it. I put it someplace safe from the animals when get <laughs> You put it someplace safe from you as well is what happened. So, like I said, mine can make three different sizes. So mine actually came with three different um, paper cutters. And I wrote on here so that I could remember. So the largest button that I have is two and a quarter inches. But I wrote here on the package that you need to make the design 2.75 inches or so it's going to have the, the overlap because um, it's going to kind of wrap around the back of the button if that makes sense yeah okay so this is mine i, I have the same one. Oh, okay yeah so so it comes apart, so I I place it and then I go around. But like I said, I wasn't too sure what I ordered. Um, let me see here. So there's some there's some booby buttons. So that's one of the buttons. So cute. So there's a a so booby. Sarah's doing so this, an event um this weekend, and uh, what's what's the it's I know it has something to do with dogs, so it's like dog rescue. Yeah, it's a craft fair um, slash fundraiser for an organization called Rescue Magoo. Okay, perfect. They, so, they, were bringing, they were bringing dogs from different countries. They're not kidding because a lot that they can't. So um, they're just trying to find homes for the animals that they brought in from like Argentina and um, uh, what's the other places? Ukraine and places like that. And then also we have dogs here that have to find homes. Right. Okay, perfect. So that's... Um, that's a good cause. And yep. you've made uh, your buttons with the themes for canines and pups. I saw some of the designs you posted on your reel. They're really cute. Thank you. Really, really cute. So tonight I'm going to put together a couple of graduation pins. So I have a young lady that I'm going to um, be making a graduation, a graduation uh, cap topper for and some um, graduation hand fans. And so I figured since we we're gonna be doing this button pin demonstration tonight, then I can just throw in a couple button pins for her at no charge. So this is the lovely Brittany Black. She's gonna be graduating from college next week. 30, 30. So congratulations, Brittany. Actually, uh, a good friend of mine, daughter. So I'm um, excited about this, and I think she'll be pleasantly surprised with her button pins that she wasn't expecting. <laughs> so I actually printed out the paper for the button pins twice, and I just want to say that um, when you're doing these pins, I found that it is better to use copy paper. You want the paper to be thin. Um, if you're trying to use cardstock, photo paper, any of those papers that are thick, your button runs the chance of not being put together properly and or coming apart because the paper is too thick. You want it to be thin copy paper. And so my suggestion if you're going to use copy paper is that you make sure that you go into your printing preferences and change them. You can see this picture I printed is really, really dark because uh, I didn't change the settings to plain copy paper. But then you can see this one is quite um, bright and clear. So it, it does make a, a huge difference. So if you do a lot of like party favors, t-shirts, um, photo gifts, make sure you change your settings back to just regular plain copy paper so that you get the best print results because if not it's gonna put too much ink and it's gonna be really dark all right that's my suggestions or my tips for starting off with uh with the button pins so i do um use these little paper cutters that were provided with my machine Sometimes I find it easier though to just cut them out by hand. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to wrap around the back. So they're not going to see if it's not exactly uh, 
circle. I'm just trying to find. We just lost Tara. I don't know. I'll pay attention to see when she comes back. So I'm going to just myself just cut, start cutting these circles out by hand. So if you've been on the channel before, welcome back. So glad to have you back. Thank you for joining us. If you're new to the channel, thank you for coming. And if you're watching the playback, make sure you let us know that you checked the playback out. Leave a comment down below. All right. All right, so I'm about ready. Okay. That's as much as a presser you guys are going to see because of the angle of my thumb. Oh, yours is cute. It's red. Yeah, it's a V-V-O-R. V -E -V okay. So I had... I think I had to link up for the one that I had, too. So the one that I purchased is... What's the brand? Soufly. <laughs> that's, a, that's a weird name. Soufly. And uh, if you want to check that out, you can check that out in the description box below. Uh, Tara's in Canada, so her links for her Amazon are not the same. Yeah, and I don't have an affiliate, affiliate link yet anyway, so I have to start, I have to work on that this weekend. Okay, so uh, right before it dropped, I was just saying that I'm just I'm just going to cut my circles out by hand. I find it a whole lot easier and faster for me to do that. And I don't worry about it being perfect because we're not going to see the edges. I agree. Well, what I, I have a hat, you know, like the regular, um, what do they call them? Uh, punches. But I couldn't find the right size I need, so I have to search over the weekend. But I think I got, I think this is two inches. And the circle themselves are like one point something. I don't even know. Let me find my Yeah, it's just so much easier because it's a circle. I just let the scissors kind of just go around on its own. It's simple. If it were a more complex shape, then I'd fuss around. Um, and if I'm not doing a whole lot, then I'll let my Cricut actually cut them out. But I did a print and cut yesterday and my calibration was off, so I didn't even worry about that. I just yes, did my Photoshop, so. So, um, it's a little bit over two inches. I can't read that. Okay. Yeah, so my, my, I have, my button maker is 2.25 inches but it says it cuts at 2.75 inches. So it gives a whole half inch of room around it to wrap around. Okay. That. So what's the nut, the two little lines after the two? Mm -hmm. Like for the diameter, when I use the measuring tape, mm -hmm. it shows me two, but it goes a little bit like over. Two lines. That's a uh, um shoot. I don't know. Get don't give me the line. <laughs> I was getting ready to lie. I was getting ready to say, "Oh, that's so and so many inches." I, I can't even say it with confidence. I don't know. Okay, because that's how, that. Was <laughs> <laughs> I was just getting ready to straight up lie. Because that's the <laughs> circumference. That's the circumference of the cutter. Right. But I honestly I have no idea what it is. And then the buttons themselves, when I actually punch them out, I have so many boo-boo ones. So when I actually yeah, met so with there's you, a little bit of a learning curve in a minute. I messed up a lot. Like I, a couple of them I forgot to even put the little plastic thing on it. 
which I don't mind because I can put UV resin after when I make those boo-boos and I just keep those ones. Okay, so after it's been punched, it goes down because you saw it was two and the two lines over the two inches. And then once it's been punched, the actual button itself is uh, one and I don't know what the heck that is. So I guess it's like 1.75 or 7.8. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, that's a, that's a drastic difference when you punch it. Right. So that's the punch size. And then this is the size it is when it's cut. I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, that is. Yeah. So like, a, like this one, I marked it out. It's about an extra half of an inch that okay. get cut off of the design. And I'm glad I wrote those down because then that helps me to make sure that I create create like a bleed area, but that I keep yeah. my image within the shape that it's going to show, not the shape that it's gonna cut out. And that's what I did, because I did them in um, Canva just for the sake of it. And I did make a circle, which I thought was the size of the pin. I did the size of the pin, but yeah, then when I cut, extra. yeah, but then when I cut them and punch them, weren't one of those. Dun, 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 dun. Nope, it's a bobo. It's a bobo. Um, I don't know where I put it. You see, you see the black line around it. So I guess I have to make it a bit bigger. It's a learning curve. I'm still learning because there was no real instructions with it. Now, one right. thing I do is I put double sided tape on my cutout circles. Just a very, very tiny piece. And then I tape it to the metal parts. That way I can center it better. So it doesn't move on the press. Okay. And I'm curious to see if the process is different on a different machine or if it's the same. Well, you basically put your paper on your metal circle. So I'm going to do that. Like I said, I put the double sided tape on. And I try to center it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the chat. If you are new to the channel, thank you for joining us tonight. If you are returning, we appreciate having you back. I'm Janoa. That's Sarah. We are doing Friday night live craft and combos. We do this 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Took a bit of a hiatus over the last couple of weeks, but we are back and tonight we're doing button pins. Leave a comment down below in the chat. And make sure you're liking, sharing the video, subscribing to the channel, all that good stuff. So my machine is lime green. <laughs> <laughs> I like it now. So with my machine, I don't know if you can see it here. Let me just turn it this way for a second. Oh, no. Let me just see if this would work out. So I have the right side and the left side. So the left side, I don't know if you can see it because the wait. Let me see if I can do it this way. I don't know if that's better for the camera. So this would be the side that you put your metal plates with your piece of paper. And then you have these little pieces of acetate, this the plastic that goes on tolerance. I think all the presses are basically the same. So you take a piece of acetate, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I can see it. And then you just put it on top. There it is. Make sure it's down. You make it straight. And then you press your press. Oh, you have to align it. <laughs> How you and then you press doing it. tonight. We have dimp designs and we have craftable things in the house as well. I'll follow your channel. 
Welcome. So to have you here. She just finished up her Friday night craft and combos as well. Yeah, we do this on the late night on Friday. So it's late for all my peeps on the East Coast. Yeah, it's um, after I'm in California. So appreciate having you guys here and for leaving a comment. Thank you so, so much. So we're just working on some button pins tonight. So Tara's showing so, us her new machine. So once I did the, the part with the paper and the plastic, I have the, the bottom part on the right hand side. I'm just doing my machine backwards so you guys can see it. So I'm going to slide that over. And then I have to push it down really hard to make sure. And hopefully it's not going to do a boo-boo. Let's see. There we go. And I bring it back up. Slide over and hopefully it works. I know, it's awesome. So this one wasn't done too, too tight because I'm doing the machine backwards. I'm going to do it my way and then hopefully the camera can catch it. It's hard to do it because the handle of the machine gets in the way of the camera. Yeah, I tried doing a, like recording a video and I was having the toughest time trying to figure out what angle I should do this, you know, what will be best so people can actually see what I'm doing. Yeah. Um. I'm just hand cutting out my designs. My button maker came with the little circular paper cutters, but I find it easier for me to just fussy cut. My scissors are super sharp, so I don't really have to do much but just guide the paper in a circle, and it does it for me. So if anyone is curious as to why I'm cutting it versus using the tools that came with it, it's just faster. But if you're not making very many of them, you can always send this to your Cricut or your Silhouette and do a print cut. Yep. If you don't want to cut them out yourself or use the paper cutters. I've also, um, because these are kind of, you know, I love the button maker itself, but the little paper cutters are kind of cheaply made. So sometimes you're using them and the little blade will just pop out or whatever, at least the ones that I have. So I've even used my my little manual die cut machine and my metal circle dies to cut them out too. Yeah, I was going to do that. But that's a lot of work. Yeah, is that uh, that's usually reserved if I'm only doing a couple. So, okay, so I've cut out sloppily doesn't really matter because it's going to wrap around the the metal plate so you're not going to see it but i cut out all my little um pictures for my graduation pins and then i just cut out some little sarcastic like saying that i'm going to make on the other pins and I'm thinking if I should switch my camera around as well, or if I should try and work it here in the front. It's up to you. So you got the button maker from Timu or the paper cutters from Timu? And was it less expensive? Because mine can make three size buttons. And it came with all the pieces to make the buttons. And I think I paid around $99, like $100 for mine. Okay. So this is my button maker that I have. I'm gonna put it down just a little bit. The paper cutters, oh, okay. Maybe I'll look into that then because I really like the concept and how these work, but yeah, they're kind of kind of a little flimsy. So um, I wasn't expecting for him to even come with a paper cutter, so I was okay with that. The the big one works better than the small one. The, the small one kind of falls apart on me. Hey, Danae. Hello, everyone. Danae is in the house. 
I hope you had a good week, sis. Whoa. Okay, so. my box for my button maker with all my attachments and stuff in it so you have the different attachments depending on uh, what size button you're gonna make and then it comes with all the little metal pieces the little plastic cover and then the actual pin backs as well so i'm just going to take it out of the box and sit on the table with that So Tara, did your button maker also come with pre-cut like white pieces of paper? Nope. Because I'm wondering what this would be for. Is this for like if you want to do some stamping or if you want to do like coloring or writing your own things? Because you're not going to be able to put this into a printer. I would probably think if you want to do um, like stamping, like you said, anything. Uh, maybe if you want to also cut other stuff, maybe put a sticker on it. Something yeah, about that. that would be what, what it's for. Because I, I was a little bit confused by that. I'm like, I know it can't go into a printer. So what mm -hmm. are those pieces of paper for? So Probably for you to write something or to stamp something, add a sticker or draw on it. So for those of you who just came in, I put double-sided tape on my cutout so that way I can align my metal disc first. Instead of putting the disc in and putting the paper on top, it uh, it makes me avoid having it spin around. I have more control. Okay, so tonight I'm only gonna be doing the if I don't drop everything, let me pick that back up. <laughs> I'm going to be doing the um, the 2.25 inch button, and I'm going to be doing the 1.25 inch button. So each of the buttons has a box like here that is, um, I mean, each of the button sizes has its own little box with its own mechanisms so you have to know which size button you're going to be doing so that you can pull out the right the right one okay and then this is what the machine looks like with none of the attachments on it the only thing that i did is it does have this little zip tie thing to keep the handle down so you can store it back easily the only thing i did was remove the zip tie so the handle is in that position so Tara is making buttons for an event that she's going to be doing on Sunday, right? Yes. Sunday? It was supposed to be tomorrow, but we're going to have rain, so we moved it to Sunday. She's having rain, and I think it was like 85 degrees out here today. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was hot. I know that. Well, it was three okay, so to four. This is a little attraction. Okay. We had we had flurries and it was frost last night, and then today is super humid. Okay, so it has this two sides. One side has that little metal that you can see and the other one is just the plastic on the side that has the metal. There's this little bracket. So you're gonna fit that right inside there like that. And you have to make sure that you have that in there or it isn't going to work properly. So Danae says she's had her button maker in her cart for Amazon since 2018. Buy it. Yeah, Tara just got hers. Get it, Danae. Get it. I, I bought mine for Mother's Day for myself. Okay, I'm still so learning, but I'm having fun. I've done about 60 buttons in total. 
Uh, yeah, so quite a few knocked out 60. She's, you say you're going to do 100, right? Well, I've done more than 60 because a bunch of them are duds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them apart and I'm going to put like acrylic paint pour skins on it and do whatever else because the back looks so good. But I'm going to do, do 100 because I'm going to sell them for $3 a piece on Sunday. There you go. And Tara's in Canada. She's in Quebec. Yep. You said you always need buttons. Yeah, and Danae, you do photography. You need to do, you need to go on ahead and purchase it. So Danae does photography among like 18 other jobs that she has. And um, <laughs> graduation season, I see that the keychains are always a big hit. The grad stoles are a big hit for you in your photography business. So I don't see it being any different for the buttons, honey. So on my machine, I'm just going to hold it sideways so you can see. I don't think I'm going to do my overhead camera because the angle is going to be kind of crazy. And Tara's showing us what it's looking like from that angle. So if you yeah. can see, there is this little area right here. What you're going to do is you're going to take whatever size button you're going to be doing, and you're just going to slide this into the machine. Okay. Yeah. Once you I finally figured out the angle. I take this little tiny piece here and I stick it there in that hole and then what that does is that prevents it from coming out when you're sliding it back and forth because if I didn't have that little metal piece in there when you slide it back and forth it's just going to come right out okay it's yes I have that too yeah stick that in there and I have my pieces in for my large button which is the two point what is it? 2.25. Okay, so that's what it's looking like so far. There's one more piece that I need to put in there, and it looks like this. I don't know what it's called. We'll just call it a flex capacitor, right? Okay, <laughs> that works. This piece goes underneath, and then you push it up. So, let me take out this bottom part. It'd probably be a lot easier for me to put my flex capacitor in without that in the way. I'm just going to take this piece. And there's a little hole up there. You line it up. Yep. And then it just clicks into place. So that's the press part. That's the part you press down and it smashes everything all together. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide it back in. Slide it back in. Turn this. And I'm going to put my little metal piece back in to stop it. So while I'm hooking my little machine up, what's some things that you guys may want to try on our next uh, crafting combos? Let us know. Craftable things that she like to put a glue stick on the top to help her paper stay on. Double-sided tape works really well. I do a bunch of them first, I cut them out. Put a bunch of double-sided tape. And I usually have a bunch already with the metal plate on them. And mine came with a thousand pieces. I can make a thousand buttons. So I actually came with three thousand pieces. So a thousand the metal. So it gives me enough uh, wiggle room to make mistakes. Okay, I'm doing something very wrong here. And I know that because it isn't sliding the way that I need it to. But that's also because, like I said, my button maker has spent the majority of this time underneath my desk in the box that it came. <laughs> so. But now our, our goal is to use what we have and not buy anything new. Well, other than what I just bought. But I rewarded myself because I had a goal of doing 50 projects before I can buy myself a present. 
Okay, so I'm hoping I have it in there the right way this time. We shall see. Didn't you just use it recently to do a, a funeral thing? Yeah, but I always mess up at least three or four of them before I get it right. <laughs> because I have to like refresh my memory on the whole thing. So I got it in there now. And then I put the bracket back in there so it doesn't slide out. So yeah, I think that this is the right way. Okay, so there's two sides to it. So the side that does not have the little plastic metal washer looking thing and then the side that has the metal and the plastic washer looking thing. Okay, so on the side that does not have the metal or the washer, that would be the side that you're going to put your picture on. The side that has the washer on it and the metal bracket part is the side that you put the button back into. All right. So the order of operation on the side that does not have the washer or the metal would be for you to first take You know, first take one of these like metal plate pieces and you're gonna just, it just fits right in there. See, it just fits right down in there. And then you can either use um, the glue stick suggestion or you can do double-sided tape or you can choose to do nothing. Most of the time I just drop mine in there. But since everybody else is being fancy, I guess I'll be fancy too. Just well, it's not being fancy. It's just for me to learn because my stuff up, I'm moving. Hey, let me let me say fancy if I want to say fancy. <laughs> <laughs> so I just put a little bit of tape runner on the back, double sided tape. So the next thing on top of the metal is you're going to put your picture facing up. And after you put your picture facing up, it's going to be like that. So you have your metal piece down there. Then you have your picture on top. Next thing you're going to do, you're going to get one of the little plastic acetate circles. And make sure you, they're not sticking together because they will stick together. And don't do like I just did and put fingerprints all over it. Okay. So it's gonna go metal plate your picture. Now I put the acetate piece on there. Excuse me. So then I slide it so that the other side with the metal and the washer is exposed. And then on that side, you're gonna put your button pin back. So yeah, to answer your question, she has an event on Sunday. Um, I had an order for some graduation hand fans. So I'm just going to throw in some free buttons for them as well and just doing it as a demonstration. Okay, so on the side with the washer, you're going to put your button back on there and you want to make sure that you put it in the right way. So you're going to put it in with the, the side that has the curved edges facing up. I hope that makes sense. Keep in mind which direction your picture is in because you want to make sure that the pin on the back is in the right direction too. So this is one bag that I basically haven't even put a dent in yet. Mm -hmm. Did you order the metal backs too, or are you going to use the plastic one? I'm going to start off with the plastic ones for the event. I will order some metal ones, because I also hear the metal ones um, 
they work a lot better than the plastic because it's metal on metal. So, but I got a thousand. I'm not quick to order anything else right now. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of them left too. <laughs> so now that I have uh, everything inserted into my button maker the way that I needed to, you're gonna slide it over so that the side that has the picture and the metal back and the, the acetate is uh, under the press handle. Try to go ahead and press it down. If it doesn't press, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn that little flex capacitor, just like a quarter turn, either to the left or to the right, and then do it again. You should feel that it's going down. Okay, so now, yeah, that's a big difference. I find when I do it standing up, I have less mistakes. Yeah, because that seems like it doesn't even want to go. Because I've been on with you right now, and I've had no mistakes because I'm standing up. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> And watch me just jinx myself. Yeah, I'm jinxing myself too because mine doesn't want to do what I needed to do. Well, it's good because then people can see how to rectify an issue. Huh? I said it's good. It's good to have a little bit of an issue so that people can see how you fix the problem. Right, and like I said, I usually I'm always honest with you guys. That's why the channel's called a crafty mess. <laughs> I make mistakes. <laughs> And I usually tear up like a couple of them the first couple times once I start using the machine again. So that time it worked. I felt the click. You'll feel it. You don't want to do it too hard because you want to break your thing. But, you know, you'll feel it when it's right. And I know that it's right because now if I slide the piece out, my picture and the metal piece and the acetate is gone. It's actually up in my flex capacitor piece. I don't know why I keep calling it that, but I think that's kind of cute. Okay, so the first so. time the first time I pressed, I was panicking because I couldn't find the button. I didn't know it stays up in there. So I'm trying to pick yeah. it up with a screwdriver. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, my God, I got it jammed up there. <laughs> I was so yeah. panicked. I just bought it. <laughs> it's supposed to stay up there, guys, so don't panic. So then what you're going to do is you're going to move it to the other side. So now the metal back is underneath the handle. And you're going to turn it the opposite way. And then press down. And you'll feel it. Okay? So, look, I'm able to close it all the way. If it wasn't turned the right direction, that would not have happened. So, now you can slide it back out the other way. And then your pin pops out. And it's all done. And it's nice and shiny with the acetate on there. And what setting do you put your, your painting on? You got your pen back on there. I'm sorry? What setting do you have your printing on? Um, I have it on high quality, but the big difference was making sure that I changed it to plain paper. Okay, because I have it on plain paper and I have it just on standard print. I don't, you know, my printer is old. If if I don't put it on high qualities, it'll get lines in it. Oh, okay. I understand. It'll get those lines. But you can see the difference. So look at this picture. This was when it was on, like, photo paper setting. Mm -hmm. And then look at this picture. It's just yeah. so much more bright. So much better. And you can see the details better. So that, I want that, them to make an electric. If they have an electric button maker, I want to buy that because after a while, your hands start to hurt. I'm just gonna move it down just a little bit, and y'all, you know, excuse my a lady bit. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> is your machine plastic or metal? It is plastic, and then it has like certain parts that are metal, but it's all plastic. Oh no, mine is all metal except for the um, the part that the the press is on. It's a very sturdy plastic that holds the two metal pieces, but the whole thing is metal. 
See, look at you being all fancy. Well, because I'm going to be taking it to fairs, and, it, and at times I'm going to be doing buttons on the spot. I didn't want to have the plastic one. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to have an activity where the kids are going to be pressing their own buttons, I didn't want to have a plastic one. I don't think I thought about it. I just, whatever machine they sent, uh, sent to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the first run. So um, I know that my name is kind of blocking it out just a little bit. I don't know. You know, I can never figure out this whole camera angle thing. It just upsets my soul. Yeah, for some reason, my phone is the, is like our standard backwards. It's not doing it the right way like it usually does. But it should be easy for us to do it again. So again, on the side that has the metal and has the plastic bracket, that is the side that we put the pin back on. It's easy to remember that because it's deep. So you need it to be deep so that it'll fit down in there. Okay, so I'm just going to snap it down in there. Okay, and I'm going to turn it, not turn it, excuse me, push it out the other end. And on this side, it goes metal piece, photo, plastic. Okay. So y'all can see that time I, I didn't put the the double sided. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna slide it so that the picture is under the handle. We're gonna turn this little flex capacitor thing. And we're gonna push down. Okay, and I know that it worked because when I slide it back out. My picture is no longer in there. It's gone. It's up in this piece here. So slide it back over so that it's where the backing is. And then you do your quarter turn up here. And now we're going to press down again. And this time you should be able to go all the way down, like so. Slide it out. And there's our completed button with the back. So they're really simple to do. They're actually really fun to do too. So I'm gonna finish making these buttons for Miss Brittany. I'm so proud of her. Beautiful, beautiful. And then um, I printed out some cute little, you know me, I got a smart mouth and a weird sense of humor. So. I have some too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have some really sarcastic buttons. And those, um, I did make some buttons for one of the events, the fairs that I did. And the sarcastic buttons sold the easiest and the best because, like you said, people really like those funny little sayings. And yep. I think that a button pen, it does really well because if you're going somewhere and you don't want that on there, you can just take it off. Yeah, a, a t-shirt. Yeah, you know, something that may be a little bit more difficult. So again, metal piece on this side, and then I'm going to pick one of my funny little sayings, and I'm going to stick that on top of the metal piece. Now, some of these papers, I could have done a very a much better job at trimming. So I'm going to just go around this just a little bit. It's just a little bit too big. And I don't want it to be too big because then what will happen is it will create wrinkles. Yeah. Because your button press machine is going to shove it all in there. So you don't want it to create like ripples or wrinkles. Okay, so that's better. Stick my little saying in there and then I'm going to get my plastic piece. And that's going to go on top of the thing. Okay, so then we slide it so that our picture and our metal piece and plastic under the handle. We do our quarter turn and then we pull the handle down. We know it worked because when we slide it out, 
our picture is gone. We're going to do that quarter turn again. And now we're going to go all the way down. Slide it out. And there's our finished button. And what do you think about uh, this cute little thing? What did it say? Um, I wonder where these boys ran. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so after you get the hang of it, or at least after I get the hang of it, then it's pretty smooth sailing after that. They go pretty pushy once you get it down. To me, it's just that initial two, three buttons in the beginning to get me back on track and get it back in my mind on how to uh, how to do it and then once that happens I'm usually good to go well I'm going to stop very soon because I'm getting tired <laughs> yes, and I lost track of how many I've done well you, you have been going button crazy now mm -hmm. my dear I've done 18 thus far. Since we've been online? Yep. <sighs> I've done four <laughs> because I've been running my mouth mostly, but that's what I do. So. But you're the hostess. You're the hostess with the mostess. The hostess with the mostess. Yeah, so while we're, we're talking about being the hostess with the mostess, if you're new to the channel, thank you. Make sure you're hitting the like button, please. And thank you. Make sure you're also sharing with your crafty friends. You join us every Friday night. We do this 7 p.m. We do ours on the late night. So if you're not able to join us live, we'd appreciate you watching the playback. While you're here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and that you follow and subscribe to Tara's channel as well. Her Let's channel is Precious to Like Canada here on YouTube. She's also on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and all that good stuff as well. She's out of Canada. Straight yep. out of Canada. Straight out of Canada. From, <laughs> from the Great North. Wee wee, wee wee from the Great North. Wee wee, gang gang, wee wee. <laughs> Drama queen. <laughs> and I like this one too. Don't get offended. It's just jokes. <laughs> I have a bunch set up too on my printer for um, my event on June 3rd. But I'm trying to come up with a name for the business, uh, for the button part of Precious Lights Canada. So I didn't know what to call it. Are you going to have it be separate or just a... Well, a pre well, Precious Delights is the umbrella. Right. So, um, it's gonna it's separate but not separate, you know what I mean? So, separate but equal? Basically, yeah. <laughs> because I want to do a whole separate, like, um, Instagram, like a whole different separate, um, separate social media for it. So I can just have a display of my buttons. Like I do have a separate Instagram for my visual art. So I want to do the same thing for the buttons. All right. I think I cut this one. Out. But we shall see. Some of these I hand cut pretty badly, but. Yeah, this one's good. Come here, buddy. That didn't. Let me see. Okay. Okay. We're going to see what happens. Okay. 
No, I just trimmed one. I want to see what happens if I trim it by hand. Oops. Yeah, that's what I've been doing, is just trimming mine by hand. Um, I'm going to take craftable things. I'm going to take her um, suggestion and look on table and see if I can't get better circle cutters there. So for me, my buddy maker was one of those impulse buys. I just had to have it because I was seeing everybody online making buttons and I was like, I need that. But it is also one of those things that um, has been worth it. Like I haven't regretted it, even though I don't use it as much. I've, I've made my money from just the time that I did, so. Yeah, that's my goal this weekend is to make back the money. And then I know from every other event now, everything will be 100% profit. Right. I have to buy more supplies. Right. But even and if I do... I have an initially a choice, you know, like we talked about earlier today, uh, memorial items are a big business opportunity. Mm-hmm. I don't do memorial. I'm either just do the, the bridal thing or the baby shower, like teen boy, teen girl. Mm -hmm. You know, or graduation, or I'm going to do a line of affirmation ones. And then teachers can buy them and hand them up to their students. Well, I thought of a perfect opportunity for these, right? So here in my hometown, we have a small arena venue, the one that I went to the concert three weeks back. And they have been sending me, asking me if I wanted to spin at their, you know, events. Mm -hmm. But um, when you do old school concerts, that was the first thing that popped into mind. Because back in yep. the day, that was something that was popular is to have buttons yep. on your Not clothes sure. for the music group that you like. Yep. So. That one didn't come out too well. So what do you do with the bed? Mm -hmm. What do you do with your duds? Um, I still keep them. Like this one, the plastic just wasn't on there all that well. The button still looks good. It just doesn't have plastic on it. So I would still give it to her. I mean, this is something that I was doing for, you know, just because anyway. So it wasn't like they paid for it. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, that that I would still give them. I have, I have a few in the box that, like, this one is also one that I made a while ago that I had forgotten to put the little plastic on. Okay. So it's just paper right now. But I could put a, a sealant on that. Yeah, or UV resin for dome it. Right. Because what I'm going to do with mine, I'm going to take them all apart because the backs are going to still be good. And I'm going to put um, the skins from my acrylic paint pouring mm -hmm. and then put UV resin on them. Okay. All right. How are you going to get the skin? Oh, oh, well, the UV resin will make it stick. Never mind. That, was, that, that wasn't the question. <laughs> <laughs> See, so one, so the ones that the ones that I end up having like this with a corner that didn't press, I put some glue on. Can you see it? I put some glue on it and then I press it after by hand because it didn't close all the way. But these things, I I don't throw out. I'm not going to reuse. I will fix it. Wait. Okay. 
So I'm not quite sure why that would didn't come out the way that I wanted it to. But um, Danae is asking, what sizes do you make? Do you make yours? What size button? Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the finish button is two point two five. Um, I know that they have the three inch three inch pieces as well but mine only goes up to a 2.25 but the circle that is going to cut is going to be 2.75 so you want to make sure your design fits in the 2.25 area because that's what's going to show but you need at least 2.75 to cover the amount of paper that's going to wrap around the button if that makes sense So this particular button maker that I have, I don't know which one you have in your cart, Danae, but this one has three different size uh, attachments. So I can make a one inch button, a one and a quarter inch button, and a two and a quarter inch button. I was trying to look on Amazon to see if they had one that would include the three inch button, but it seems like you have to purchase it separate. So I just linked the one that I bought below. So I'm finished with the large graduation pins that I'm going to donate to my customer with her graduation fan and um, graduation cap topper. So you're done for the evening? I'm sorry? You're done for the evening? Oh, with the button? With that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with that size. So I have some more printouts, but it's for the smaller button. Okay, so you're going to just change the channel. I'm sorry, I didn't get that last part either. Oh, <laughs> you're going to change the machine now? The yeah. sizing? Yeah. Yeah, but if you're done with yours, I know that it is very late on your end. What, we are 11 o'clock on your time right now, so. Yeah, I'm going to try I, to finish the ones I cut. Mm -hmm. So I think I have like maybe, I have this many left, I guess. So okay. it's going pretty fast. Yes. Whether I do them online with you or I do them after we get off, I'm going to get them done because I can't just have them sitting there. It'll drive me crazy. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to just put the metal in all of, all of them for now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my machine apart. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So first thing is you're going to go and you're going to take that little piece that was holding this sliding mechanism in there out. Put it to the side, make sure you don't lose that. And then you're going to slide it out. This is for the 2.25 um, button maker. Okay. And then you're also going to take your little, what I've been calling flex capacitor piece out as well. Okay. Because all of that goes together for this size button. I'm gonna put it back into the little box for this size that I have labeled. Okay, so then that's my 2.25 inch button. And then I get my box out for my 1.25 inch buttons. We're going to do the same thing that we did. Put 
this side. And this one's still in plastic. You can see how many times oh, it's so noisy on the street. Um, how many times I've used this because it's still in the plastic. So this is the size button that this one makes. A whole inch smaller. You make sure you don't lose this little washer piece. That's very important. So we're going to slide it into the grooves like we did before. And then you're going to take your piece and stick that in the hole there. And that keeps it from coming out when you're moving it back and forth across. Okay, we got to put our flex capacitor thing in there. Should have did that first. Wasn't thinking. Was not thinking, but that's okay. Easy things. Just slide that right on out. Put this piece in. So, um, the name, I'm not exactly sure. I think mine does 1.78 or 7.5. I forgot what I bought. I know it's, I don't think it's two inches. It's probably 1.7, 7.5 or 7.8. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put all of my little pieces for my 2.25 inch button away. Because now we're working on smaller ones. And I don't want them to get misplaced. So it's about, uh, that's one and a half. It's just a few lines under 1.75. Okay, so it doesn't even look like this has even been opened. Okay, so it's the same method, no matter what size the button is, guys. You just have to change out the housings and the pieces so that it fits. So I guess according to the fact that I'm having to open these packages now, I've never made this size button before. I've only made the very small one and the big one. So you just told on yourself. Yeah. Yes, I did, ma'am. <laughs> yes, I did. So. With the little piece, I think I am going to use the double sided tape because it's moving around a little bit too much for me. Well, the, I work at a, a maker space in one of my little towns, and they got a button press that's the one inch. And it was there that I learned to put the double sided tape because they're so tiny. It's only one inch or one inch. But also by doing that, I can have a bunch of them pre um preloaded, quote unquote, in the metal and I can just press nonstop. So I'm confused. About why the plastic piece seems so big for this. I'll 
Oh, well, it worked. It just seems like the plastic piece for the smaller button was so much bigger. So you can see the difference in the uh, the size. Here, it's so tiny. It's so small. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one inch? That is 1.25. So oh. there's one that's actually smaller than this. Yeah, that's what the one I was using at the time. Is the one inch. I think I have one so. so I've made one inch, but never the 1.25, I guess, because the packages were all still sealed and had to be actually cut open. So doesn't take a long time though to make a whole bunch of them. I mean, once you get on a roll and you get like a rhythm going, then you can pretty much knock them out. I would just say, make sure you do it in steps, like cut all your pieces first before you start assembling them. Cause then you can get like a little rhythm going. And that's what I do. I cut them and then I mount them onto the actual plate. And then now I'm just gonna crush them. You're so small. <laughs> You're so tiny. But these are good for um, not just memorial items, but like um, to put on backpacks, purses. These small ones, I see people sometimes putting them on their hats. So this is a one inch. It's so cute. It's so tiny. <laughs> so this is the one that I have. Wait, the camera's over here. And then this is a little one inch. Size difference. <laughs> Yeah, it's a huge difference when you look at it, Come, you know, side by side. Yep. So that's basically the smallest size is this one. That's, this is one inch. So I know that Memory Keep, We Are Memory Keepers has a button maker yep. that they sell in your craft stores like Michael's and stuff like that. So if you can't find one on Amazon, you can take a look at those in the Michael stores. And I believe with the We Are Memory Keepers items, you are able to use their coupons. So it's not like uh, the restrictions they have on like the cricket and the silhouette stuff that you can't use the coupons. So you can use the link that was provided or you can go into your local craft store and see what they have available. Trying to put the like items with the like items because then I'll misplace them. It gets super messy after these Friday nights up here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere. And then when I come up here, I can't ever find anything. I did at least organize it and push it up against the, uh, the wall. So. My poor box is falling apart. It's not going to take too much more moving around. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
go. I hope she'll like her button. You never know. She might get her button and get other other colors. I think she'll like her. They're super cute. Okay, and then I just take it apart where it's back to this form, put that zip tie back on the handle, and then put everything just back into the box. These little sarcastic buttons that I made, I'll go ahead and add them to my, my site or pack them up and check in with me on my next event. Um, because this is uh, an order that includes multiple buttons, I'll probably just put them in one little bag. But if I were individually selling and packaging them, then I put them like on a little jewelry card and in a little plastic bag. Yeah, that's what I have to do next. So are you going to package these, or are you just going to hand them out in their goodie bags? Oh, no, no. These are being sold, so they have to be packaged. Oh, okay. Just give me one second. I'll put my camera around soon. Let me just move some stuff around. What do you guys think, for those of you who do not have button presses, does it seem like something that you would be interested in doing or offering if you have a business? <clears throat> and shoot us some ideas. You can either do it in the chat or you could do it in the comments or you can send an email to a crafty mess YouTube. That's a crafty mess the letter U T U B E at gmail.com and tell us something that you might want to see us do on one of our Friday night crafting combos. We still haven't done our explosion box, so that's a possibility. Yep. Um some things that are coming up uh Juneteenth it's gonna be big for next month. Um Pride if you guys celebrate or rejoice in pride, that's going to be coming up. Um, what's some other things? Fourth of July, end of school, of course, graduation. This is the season for marriage proposals, you guys, and weddings. So that as well. And then we have Father's Day coming up. Did you say Juneteenth? Yes, Juneteenth. Sorry, I have to go so put my back on. things that you guys want to keep in mind. So Juneteenth, Father's Day, end of school, teacher appreciation, graduation, proposal and or marriage, engagement, that type thing. Uh, Fourth of July. Those are all coming up. So keep that in mind and then shoot us a comment or an email and let us know um, something you may want to learn in between time okay so i guess in her flipping her camera around she lost connection that's okay i'm so glad you guys joined us tonight um hopefully you were able to make it through i uh, appreciate you having you guys here every friday 7 p.m pacific standard time if you're able to join us come back on and see us next week uh if you are not then you can always catch the playback and that works for us too Make sure you're following the channel. Subscribe. Make sure you follow Tara's channel as well. Anything you want to add before we sign off, sis? No, just thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Yeah, yeah, and thank you for coming back after our two-week break. But it was yes. much needed, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't say that it might not happen again, but again, we're open to different days and times as well. I know that this could be late for some people, um, but you know, we have other um, 
crafty people that do their Friday night lives too. So we want you to be able to join as many as you possibly can. And hopefully we will see you here next week. Yep. Think about what it is that we want to do. If we don't come up with a brand new idea, I guess it'll be some type of paper craft because we haven't really done that in a while, have we? We can do the um, graduation chat box since graduation's coming up. Excuse me. Okay, that's something that we can do. And yep. um, so that's a paper craft. Woo yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, we've been doing resin, paint pouring, what else? Etching, uh, shoes. Well, is this yeah, considered a paper craft? Because we use paper. paper to make the buttons? That doesn't count. This was about the button maker, not about the paper. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Lots of paper. So, yeah. So, that'll be awesome. So, I guess we're going to work on graduation cap card. Party favor. No, party card favor. Paper. Oh, so it's like we can a do box. a card. We can do a box and a card. Why do one or the other? We can do both. Because she's talented like that, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, that sounds like a plan. And then um, definitely we're going to do some for Juneteenth and for Father's Day coming up because those are going to be big days. So until next Friday, 7 p.m., I will sign off saying this is Janoa the Crafty Master from Precious Delights Canada. Thank you so much. And we will see you guys next week. Bye.